What's up everybody? I'm Mike Dwyer from the Bunker Recordings and BetterMixes.com and today we're taking a look at the five biggest mistakes I see people making when recording drums in their home studio. I made a video a little while back about the most common mistakes I see people make when recording guitars at home. I'll link that up here, but I thought I'd make another one discussing some of the mistakes I see all the time when it comes to recording drums. And before we get into the list, if any of these tips help you out, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. It really helps the channel. But anyway, mistake number one, not changing your heads. If your drum heads have half the coating worn off and have more craters in the moon, it's time to replace them. I know it sucks shelling out the money to replace all your drum heads, but this is your music. If you don't even give enough of a crap about it to get some new drum heads, why would you expect anyone else to give a crap either? The good news is you probably don't have to replace all your drum heads. In my experience, resonant heads last a long time since you're not actually hitting them. So as long as you don't still have the stock heads on there, you can likely get away with leaving them. And in general, tom and kick heads seem to last a bit longer, but at least get yourself a fresh snare head. The snare is arguably the most important element of the kit sound wise. So forking up 15 or 20 bucks for a fresh head can go a long way in improving your drum sounds. Now for mistake number two, not tuning your drums. This is a big one. I get that tuning drums is more complicated than tuning a guitar, and it takes a lot of practice to get good at it, but this can absolutely make or break your drum recordings. I'll put a link up here to my drum tuning guide if you wanna learn how to make your drums sound like a million bucks. An inexpensive kit tuned well will sound miles better than even the most high-end kit without a proper tuning. So spend the time to get this right before hitting record. Moving on to mistake number three, crowding your kit. Okay, so this one has everything to do with your drum setup. For some of you, this won't be a problem at all, but if you're the drummer who keeps your kit super tight with your cymbals just a couple inches above your toms and your hi-hat practically on top of your snare, it might be time to push you out of your comfort zone a bit. In general, the farther your cymbals are from your shells, the less bleed you'll get in your close mics and the better your recordings will sound. Now, obviously comfort is also important while playing, so I'm not suggesting you move your hi-hat so far away that your playing gets sloppy, but it's all about finding the balance between playability and sonic quality. So if you are that drummer who has everything on top of each other, try just moving your hi-hats up or out just a couple of inches. Same with your crashes. It might take you a couple minutes to get used to it, but you'll be thanking me later when you only have half as much cymbal bleed to deal with. Mistake number four, not balancing yourself. This is another huge one, and not nearly enough drummers even think about it, but this can be an absolute game changer. A lot of drummers just kind of assume that since there's a mic on each element of the kit, that it can all be balanced perfectly during mixing, which is maybe like half true, but they forget that the balance of the kit starts with them. Are they bashing everything as hard as they can? Or worse, smashing the cymbals, but just barely tapping the kick and snare? Now exactly what the ideal balance is depends a lot on the genre and style of the music, but in general, for rock-based stuff, you're going to want to smash the kick and snare pretty darn hard, but only hit your cymbals like medium hard. This definitely takes some practice to get right, but a great way to practice it is to record yourself playing drums with a single mic. Just toss it up a few feet back from the kit, record a little bit, and listen back. Are the cymbals overwhelming? Is the kick getting lost? Record yourself again with those things in mind and keep working at it until the drums sound balanced through a single mic. Then, once you go back to your full mic setup, it'll be so much easier to get everything working together. And finally, mistake number five, not editing your drums before recording other instruments. If you're gonna do any editing to your drums, whether it's full on quantizing everything to be right on the grid, or just nudging a bar or two here or there, do it before you record anything else. I see this one a lot. People will record the drums, then record bass, guitars, vocals, and whatever else on top, and then try to go back and edit everything. This is a big mistake, and will lead to everything feeling loose and just a little bit off. Instead, do any editing you want to do as soon as you finish recording the drums. That way, whoever is recording next can lock into the final version of the drums. Same goes for all the other instruments. If you edit as you go, you'll likely find that you need to do a lot less editing to get things sitting right. And once you're done, it'll sound a lot more cohesive. So what do you think? Are there any other big mistakes that you see a lot or that you used to do? Let me know in the comments down below and be sure to head on over to bettermixes.com to check out some incredibly sick drum samples to learn about my mixing course and one-on-one -on -one coaching to grab some free mixing guides and a whole lot more.